You're listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author Sarah Box, where you get the inside scoop on the steps action takers and decision makers take to align their purpose to their principles and achieve their goals in business and life. We focus on the mantra, no labels, no limits, no excuses. And now, without further ado, please welcome your commanding coach with plenty of chutzpah and heart, Sarah Box. Hi, everyone. This is Sarah, your host of the No Labels, No Limits podcast. First, I want to start by thanking you for joining us again, um, because for me, this is a passion project. This podcast is about shedding limiting labels and beliefs. And I know firsthand from myself and from clients that it doesn't take much of a label to make you doubt yourself. And we want to bust through limitations so we can each shine our lights brighter in the world. And frankly, have a good time doing it as we lift others up. Um, So this week, I'm really excited. We're going to be joined by Jill Strickland Brown. Um, Jill is an entrepreneur. She's an author and she's founder of Frocks. We're going to talk about that in more detail, making her way into the fashion industry for more than 30 years. She has worked as a seven figure sales rep. Those are big numbers. Pretty fun numbers. Um, And she's owned luxury boutiques, several of them. But now she's focusing on one and a different business model or an expanded business model, which I think you'll be really interested in learning about. I know I am. She organizes events that also connect with and empower women. And she is the author of Behind the Button. We're going to talk about that book. It sounds really interesting to me. And I'm a book hound. And she is a featured contributor in the book, Success Reimagined. She resides in Pennsylvania. She enjoys spending time with her family and invites the next chapter of her life with open arms, running base stitch kind of mindset. If you sew, you know what that means. If you don't, (laughs) just know that it's very forgiving. (laughs) It's very forgiving. One of my favorite stitches. So today I'm going to ask Jill to share about her journey in life and fashion, what she's learned, and how she's used that to help others live without labels or limits. And we're gonna talk about her book, like I said. So with that as an introduction, let's welcome our guest, Jill Strickland Brown. Hi, Jill. Hi, how are you? I'm so excited to be Hi, here. Too. Yeah. Well, first of all, do you go by all three names, Jill Strickland Brown, Jill Brown, Jill Strickland? I go by Jill Strickland Brown because there's a Jill Strickland that's an artist and there's a Jill Brown that's a workout gal. So there's no Jill Strickland Brown in the world. So that's, what, so there you go. So, so I kind of like the, <laughs> well, I like the Jill Strickland. I mean, there's just something about the cadence of it too. Yes. So. Well, Brown means a lot to me when you read my book. Um, that's my grandma and she, Uh, lit up her room and she was definitely a style influence for me. So that means a lot to me. Yeah. Very cool. Well, if you listen to the podcast, you know that I like to start asking our guests a question and that's whether there's something you do every day that keeps you focused on your own dreams and goals and from a whole self perspective, not just work. So every day I call it the holy hour. And what I do is I get up in the morning. um, I do something Mel Robbins um, inspired me to do, which is the five second rule. So I get up, I put my feet on the ground, five, four, three, two, one. I um, am grateful. And I, I hit the ground and say, what am I grateful for today? I don't touch that phone. I go, I do some yoga. I light a candle Um, in the winter. It's nice because I get to see the sunrise. Um, I do a little meditation and then I read something inspiring. I eat a healthy breakfast, shower and go to work. So the holy hour is very important to me. So I need to take care of myself before I take care of everyone else. So wonderful. Yeah. I do something similar, but honestly, the more I do it, the longer the hour goes. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Well, that was great. Can I just do another 10 minutes of that? (laughs) Absolutely. It's funny. Well, let's dive in. Um, You have been described as a free spirited, out of the box and everything is possible kind of girl. So would you kind of share a bit about your journey and what led you into the fashion industry. You said your grandmother has some role there. Yes. She was an inspiration. I mean, she would just walk in the room and 
everyone wanted to talk to her and be with her. And she just had very cool style. So definitely as a young girl, that was, you know, something that I just, she, she was an inspiration. And then really, uh, I was bartending at night and I was a little bored during the day. So I wanted to go in this boutique and get a job. And she said, well, I don't need anyone, but my sons own a clothing manufacturer and they need someone to answer the phone. I was like, I can answer the phone like nobody's business. And that was the best job I ever had. So it really taught me the foundations of the fashion industry. Um, They did garment dyed clothing. So I learned all about dye bass and fit and drape. And I still use those skills uh, today. And in my book, I equate the dye bath to women who have their challenges. So, you know, we uh, you immerse fabric into scalding hot water. And then when you pull it out, it's more beautiful and more textured. So I think women, when we go through those struggles, when we come out of that lifestyle bath, we have um, stretch marks and wrinkles of a life well lived and more more beautiful and more textured than when we came out. So that's kind of the basis of it. And then really uh, frocks, which is actually being rebranded and will be called behind the button, um, is a place where, you know, we educate women um, how to accentuate. Again, we teach them about fit and drape, whereas my foundations came from and how to like accentuate their, you know, body shape. So we teach them, we educate them. So so I want to talk about that a little because I, as you and I were chatting before I pushed the go button on record, <laughs> um, I was telling you that I started working with a gal. Um, I think she and I've worked together a couple of years on different things, you know, some of fashion, color, then some like more spiritual. It's just It's interesting. But we started with what you're talking about and you know, for me, I realized I never thought about that much. You know, I like, I wished I'd known, but I just never did it. And so I'm curious when you work with women, what are some of the um, surprises they find for themselves? Well, it's really interesting. There's no woman I've stood by that mirror for 20 years that comes out and is like, I am amazing. And I look fabulous. <laughs> Never happened. They always like, you know, my stomach, my butt, my, you know, my knees. I'm like, knees, really? My arms, my neck. Um, so, you know, the surprise that I give them is to show them, you know, this is how it drapes over your hip. If you want to hide your belly, you know, let's get something with a princess seam or, you know, let's put on a necklace that um, lifts the focus up to your face and away from. So I just teach them that. And they're always like, ha, huh, I never thought of it. Or I'll get behind them and show them drape. And they're like, I love it. I've never thought I, and then putting things together. Um, it's funny. I, I, <laughs> I uh, can't remember what I had for breakfast, but I remember everything in their closets. So I'm like, this piece will go back with that blue shirt that you bought, you know, two years ago or whatever. Um, so that's really funny too. So they're always surprised how we put it together, um, how we make their bodies uh, look fantastic. And yeah, that's, that's my passion for sure. So what, it sounds like you probably have some longtime customers, though, as a result of that, because that's a very intimate and honest conversation to be able to have with someone. Yeah. In so a most safe of way. my customers have been with me from the beginning. So I opened when I was 35. I'm now 55. So they've definitely been on that journey with me. So, yes, some of them. And it's actually really cool now. Um, my original customers now I'm dressing their daughters because their daughters are about 25, the same age as my daughter. And they're getting their first job and they're wanting, you know, not to buy things from the cheap throwaway stores. And they want something nice. And they they grew up watching mom look really, really good and confident. So that's kind of cool. So yes, definitely some, you know, I call them the OG Frox girls, <laughs> the originals, you know? Um, so yeah. And um, that is actually, again, talking about my book a lot because it's all based on the store. Um, the byline is stories that thread us together. And you're absolutely right. That's a very vulnerable um, situation when you're, you know, in that fitting room and, you know, someone's look, assessing your body body shape and you're unclothed. So one, I don't take advantage of that uh, trust. And two, what I found, it's interesting that like uh, the dye bath, we all go through challenges. And I went through some challenges 
And when you allow yourself to be vulnerable, I started sharing my story. They start sell, sharing their story, their story. So we share stories and um, you realize you're not alone. So that's a big theme in the book. And um, we always say, you know, stories that thread us together um, and that we're all interwoven like, you know, a fabric. So that's um, a very beyond the, the dressing them and making them feel good is realizing they're not alone. So that's a cool scene. Do the do the women that you work with ever? Um, I'm re- reflecting back on what you said, but they'll come in and say, you know, like my butt, my thighs, my knees, my blah blah blah. Right? We all do it. <laughs> well, you we probably all have a litany in our head. Well, uh, this first, then this, then this. Right? Do you have anyone who said, you know what? I kind of like them the way they are now because they've learned to see them through a different lens. Their, po- uh, their selves yeah. and their body I, is what yes. I'm asking about. A lot of my women are really cool and they're super inspired. And, you know, it's funny, you know, uh, these people are, you know, Botox and wanting to be youthful. And I have to say, <laughs> these women are incredible. They're 20 years older than me uh, or more, 70, 80. And I'm like, I want to be them. They are they're cool ladies and we actually have one we do a fashion show two times a year and we use customer models and we have this uh model that's 80 she is 88 now and she rocks that runway and everyone screams and yells and you know she is one beautiful lady and they love her you know the young girls whatever when martha comes out you know she's the star of the show so uh yeah they they do accept their body shape you know and it's because we've taught them how to look good and you're right as you get older you just like and you know my women that do have issues with you know this or that i'm like this is what a 55 year old woman looks like this is what and be proud of it because you know what those wrinkles and and you're you i know, earned everyone <laughs> you've you've birthed children that's you know you've done amazing things and and those wrinkles around your eyes are laugh lines you know what i mean so i always say they're badges of honor yeah i couldn't agree with you more i've got a few years on you too um, (laughs) it was funny because i actually said that to this gal i said i i just can't wear that and she goes why and i said i don't like my knees she goes there's nothing wrong with your knees and i go well look and and i then i looked through hers and then i went you know what okay they're fine I rode horses. I injured one skiing. It's like, what the heck, man? <laughs> They're good. Who's, riding My horses? Are good. who's riding horses and skiing? You go, girl. That's amazing, right? I gave so up the skiing. Tough. It was too dangerous for me. <laughs> you know what? You have to have a certain, I, this is what I've learned about really good skiers. They're yeah. not afraid of getting injured. They're they're thoughtful, they're talented, they're skilled, blah, blah, blah. But there is a risk in putting the brakes on because you can hurt yourself yeah. when going yeah. faster and falling quicker is better for you. So I went, oh, that tells me something about me. Yeah. And, you know, well, if you- I equate skiing to because I am a skier as well. Um, I'm in Pennsylvania, of course. Um, I equate that to life. So I always say, you know, you don't go straight down the mountain. That's how you hurt yourself. You take S. <laughs> You do S curves, which, you know, you go horizontally down the mountain and make little S's and snow plowing every now. Yeah. And you get down (laughs) the mountain and you look back and go, wow, I just did that. You know, so I think, you know, take little S curves in life and you'll get down that mountain. No problem. So when you talk about hosting events for women are those your fashion shows that you're talking about absolutely fashion shows it's um we do a lot of events but i would say the highlight of the year is the fashion show and what they love we just had one um where it's women of every shape every every age um every color everything all diverse and it's amazing every time that every woman looks amazing and it's all these all these outfits from one little store and when they stand on that runway and the finale and everyone's screaming and yelling and clapping for them it's 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 magic well let's pivot just a little bit not a lot because i want it because fashion is important it runs through your book you know and it's analogous to many things but to what degree does attitude and self-possession matter when you're you know, no matter what you're wearing, right? Because I've seen some women who could be wearing the rattiest clothes and you're going, man, mm-hmm. she's stunning. And there's nothing that stands out. I mean, right. you wouldn't, she's not a model. I think they're the most beautiful. 
um, those women. And that's, I think that's life, like you said, and, you know, you have that confidence in life. And part of that is, you know, when I make them look great, the reason I do that is so that they do have the confidence to either fake it till they become it or go out and impact the world. So you don't have to worry about your clothes. You feel great about yourself. So then you can go do, you know, be the best mom. You can go out in your community. You can do that job interview or, you know, help that client. And I, they go out and they impact the world. They really, really do. You know, I'm part of, part of so many women's empowering groups. And um, when you make them feel great, they do, you know, women, women lift women up and women um, help others. And so when you lift a woman up, she helps, a, she helps a community. You know, that's, that's just how we about. are. Yeah. We're just that way. Right. <laughs> it's true. You yeah. watch women golfers, right. They're all, you know, at the end, they're all cheering each other. Very rarely is someone all mad because they didn't win. No. Um, and you, I'm thinking <laughs> way to go gals. You know, it was right. hard, tough going way to be great sports women. Um, yeah. So let's talk about your book. What prompted you to write it? So that's really interesting. I had no idea I was going to write a book. I actually have a learning difference. Um, so I've never, I, as you can see, I have ADD and I talk really fast and um, I have so many things going on in my head, but I struggled putting it down on paper. So that was something that was so empowering. The fact that I even wrote a book. Um, but really, I had a publicist that I worked with to do all the events. And they that's the success reimagined. And she wanted to share that story of how I pivoted. And it was after 9-11, which is so kind of funny coming after COVID because that seems so small compared to COVID. But at that time I was in New York and um, I just said, I want to be close. I want to be a block away from my children because if something ever happens in the world, I want to be close to them. Um, so she wanted me to share that story. And I said, no problem. I'll be in that book. I said, but I've always wanted to write a book. And she said, well, I'll hook you up with my publisher. And that's how, and then the rest is history. Yeah. So very cool. And then how long, so you had a learning challenge. How did you get past that? Could you share with our listeners in case someone has that and says, but I, oh, I can write then. Tenacity, resilience. And like you said, that confidence, like um, I had a ghost writer who wrote it, but as I read it, it wasn't my voice. So actually I've touched every word in that book because she can't read my mind. I, you know, and as I wrote things, all these memories came. I'm like, Oh, I forgot about that. Um, uh, resilience, tenacity, you know, um, my son has dyslexia and it's a little more challenging for him. Um, I just struggle. Well, it's a form of dyslexia that I have. I don't have flip the words around like him. Um, persistence, tenacity. I never give up ever. Yeah. Well, and it also shows that, you know, we have our assumptions about how things get done. Mm -hmm. And yet there's always, I've yet to find a problem that someone else doesn't have a different way of approaching. You just have to keep looking. And so a ghostwriter, like some people say, well, if I didn't write it, it's not my thing. The heck it's not. Right. That's your words. You. Well, the other thing that's really interesting in doing the research, um, so many entrepreneurs, so many leaders, so many actors are dyslexic. Um, very successful people are dyslexic because just what you said, they had to figure out how to do it different. And they were had to work, like I always had to work harder than where it came easier to someone else. So I guess that's where the resilience and the tenacity came in is like, I have to, I have to work twice as hard. Well, the choice could have been for you to just like, because, go into a shell and not risk being ridiculed, right? So, I mean, first you had made the commitment to yourself, but and it I doesn't sound like that was ever a question uh, to you. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, there was a time where I went in a shell and I thought people would judge me. And that's where the stories that thread us together is when I said, okay, I'm going to be, because I have a hard time with vulnerability. And when I started sharing stories and people said, yeah, my brother, my sister, my, you know, my niece, my nephew, my son. I was like, oh, and then I said, okay, well then I'm not alone, you know? So 
it's okay. And especially, oh my goodness, putting a book out there, you know, it's out in the world. And that was, a, that was really strange. So I'm in a Barnes and Noble and I'm starting to share a story or I share a story with someone. They're like, yeah, I know it's in the book. And you're like, how do you know me? <laughs> you know I mean? like, oh, right. That's right. It's in a book and it's on Amazon. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, so that's, you put it out there and it's out there, you know, so that's tricky too. It's tricky, but it's a freeing kind of tricky. Oh, it's definitely freeing. Yeah, it let me let go of those stories and I'm done with them now. They're on paper and they're out there and everybody knows about them. And then book two, I want to go further behind the button, but I want to live it a little bit. I want to say, okay, these were my challenges and um, I've done this now and this these are the tools that got me there. Yeah, so that's book two, I think. I, think. So I, had, a, I had a question. <laughs> Book yeah, two. When's I'm that sorry. coming out first? When's the book coming out? Oh, I have no idea. I have to go live it first. It's uh, my book is only a year old, so I'm still okay. This okay, one. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you go back there. when I'll it comes out. We'll, <laughs> we'll come, I'll come back with that one. <laughs> Good. So uh, I want to come back though. There's a question you already talked about the dye bath, but I noticed another analogy in your book, and that is of investment pieces, right? So. Can you tell people what that means if it's not a familiar term, but then why you use that analogy in the book, what it means to us? Oh, in the, um, investment in the context of your book. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's really, so my store is on trend, but not trendy. And that's how, you know, uh, people say to me all the time, I have a shirt from 15 years ago um, that I still have. So the quality is important. And there's a couple reasons you want investment pieces. One, you wanna be able to pull them out year after year. So they're classic. Um, and then we teach people how to wardrobe build. You know, Mary comes in, I'm like, you have that white shirt, you have that black pant, don't buy it again from me. Put this, you know, this with it. So A, wardrobe building and B, which is interesting, um, my daughter's generation really gets this. It's sustainable. So when you don't continue to buy clothes and throw them away, especially the, the throwaway um, fast fashion, they call it, you know, one of our biggest environmental problems is uh, polyester uh, not breaking down in the earth and our landfills are, are full of clo uh, clothing. So when you have a top that lasts 15 years, you're not putting more things in the earth. And I try to work with um, natural fibers and cottons and linens for just that reason as well. They're biodegradable. So, yeah. And then my daughter went to FIT and this is pretty cool too. So now they do this, it's called reverse cycling. So they put bins in, or they're working on putting bins in clothing stores and actually melting down the polyester and making bottles. I and saw that. Yeah, is that cool? And so I have jeans that are made out of bottles. I have clothes that are made from bottles. So kind of cool too, yeah. I love it. Yeah, and I have um, some clothing. I never would have purchased it, right? Because first of all, I don't know to shop there, but <laughs> so simple, right? But cotton, and that's what this gal, she says, I get a link, buy this. Right, and exactly. this is your size, buy this. I said, I don't need it. She goes, buy it. Right. And I'm going, okay. You have it forever. That's what she said. And I says, I probably won't wear it off. And she goes, you could wear that once a year and it'll still be good. Right. And we teach about the little black dress. I'm like, that is classic. Just whenever you get invited somewhere, you've got the dress instead of running around, you know. And then the you can just dress color. it up. Yep. Yep. So, and we teach them that too. Yep. All of that good stuff. I yep. love it. Let's talk about um, how you're reimagining business. So we started talking about Frock. You're rebranding it to Behind yeah. the Button. But you're also shifting up how you're working with folks because I just assumed because you were so vivacious and you had all this good stuff going on, you might have multiple sites, which you don't, but you have multiple ways of reaching people. Yeah. Well, every store now is a multi-channel store. So COVID, I'm going to tell you, it was happening, but COVID accelerated um, online. And the challenge of that, most of what my women, you know, clothing is still tactile. People want to look, see, try it on. Um, there's definitely virtual things that are going to happen where you're virtually trying things on. It's starting to happen. But I think there's still the human touch. So we're working on uh, the challenge that we had is we were trying, how do you translate the amazing experience you have in store with a live person online? Because 
you know, you're in Nevada and I'm in Pennsylvania. So how do I do that for you? So we really are working on um, and very close to launching that is virtual virtual styling. So you're going to take a picture of yourself and I'm going to see your body shape. And then you're going to take pictures of, you know, clothing you want to work with, and then we'll make it like puzzle pieces. So we'll make new outfits for you. And then just like your friends say, buy this shirt, you need a white button down shirt to make this work. And then we'll, we'll actually reimagine your closet. Yeah. Oh, I, I got one that. of those, uh, buy this skirt, right? And <laughs> last year. And I said, this is my mindset. There is no way on God's green earth I'm spending that kind of money for that skirt. I'm sorry, I won't wear it, blah, blah, blah. So life goes on. And I send her a thing. I says, hey, when you're out looking around, I says, could you find me something like this, right? And I just described what I was looking for. She sends me, she goes, she sends me something in a week or so. She goes, see if this is what you're looking for. And um, then she says, oh, by the way, <laughs> It's very similar to what I recommended a year oh, ago. Right. And I said, but you know what? My head wasn't in the space a year. Right. Yeah. do that. You know, it's, we, a, it's, I had to grow. In you had to like imagine yourself in that. And we also do that. And I'll talk about that at the end. Um, for all your podcast listeners, they can jump on my website and oh, sweet. we have a discount code um, where actually I think it's free right now. They can have like a half hour consultation with me for free so that you're, you know, as OK, little- listeners, I'm going to tell you, no matter how fashion savvy you think you are, <laughs> this is a gift to give yourself because yeah. having someone simplify yeah. how you think about your stuff um, is just it's a gift. And there are some people, Jill is one of them, who can see for you, and I'm sure her team is, who can see for quickly for you what's going to help you. And you can just be honest. So don't wait. Like they say, run. Run quick. (laughs) (laughs) So that's what I wanted to talk about, the investment pieces, because that's what I see. And someone told me that when I was in my I want to say my late twenties, you know, and I was traveling and and I wanted to buy a a blazer, which was four times what I had budgeted. She goes, listen, I promise you will have this for decades. It's classic. Well, don't you know, I still have it. And we also teach, you know, and we're more than a club. We're more than just selling clothes. We're educating. So, you know, they'll say I'm going away. I'm like, I'm going to give you six pieces to put in your suitcase. Take that. That'll get you through the week. And they're like, no. I'm like, yes, do the, do what I say. Listen, Don't argue with me. <laughs> yeah. I always say, you know, it's, I say, you know, the women that let me do my job are successful. Uh, like, let me do this. Is what I do all day, every day. Yeah. Let me do it. You'll not ask the doctor like, hey, how are you going to do surgery on me? Like you kind of let him do his job. So let me do my job and uh, you'll work. It'll all work out. Yeah, that's a really good point. <laughs> I really can't imagine telling my doctor, hey, listen, when you do that test, you do it this way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, man. So um, when people read your book, what do you hope they take away from it? I think I hope that you find out your why and that you go after your why with tenacity and resilience and no matter what you're going through, you know, and we all have challenges in life. We've all had hurdles that we've had to go through, but I think hopefully when they read my story, it resonates with them and they say, wow, I see myself in that story and I'm going to go live my why and I'm going to go impact the world. And this is what God put me on the earth to do. And that is my purpose. So I think when you align yourself with your purpose, you know, it's, you're limitless. Well, clearly you've done that. (laughs) So let's go back to what you mentioned. Let's find out how, what is the best way for people to connect with you and where should they get your book? So the book is on Amazon and please leave me a review. I would love good or bad because I'm working on the second one. So go on Amazon. You can grab uh, the book and then, and it's behind the button, obviously. And um, just jump on my website. You'll get in my world and you'll see, you know, the book, the, all the, you'll just jump in my world and it's behind the button by Jill.com. So we'll have that in the show notes. So everybody Perfect. can see that. And um, 
easily find you. And I'm not joking. Go on there and get get the freebie she's offering yeah. and give yourself a treat because even yes. and I, and when it's no longer free, do it anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, they just have to go under my media tab, which will show, you know, the, the thumbnail view, Sarah, and all my podcasts. And then, yep, yeah, just push the red button and you get me. Yep. Awesome. That'll be great. Yeah. So, Jill, I want to thank you so much for being on this week's podcast and ask if there were one piece of advice you would give your eight-year-old Jill, the version of you at eight, what oh. would that be? That would be have the courage to believe in yourself. I think, uh, you know, we all have people around us, you know, we're born um, free spirits and we don't have all those hangups. And then somebody along the way teaches us that, you know, you're not that. So I would say believe in yourself is huge. Okay, folks, that's where we're going to leave it this week because I couldn't add on to that. So thanks for listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast. Um, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please share it with a friend. You can tell from Jill and her energy and her passion, it's definitely worth sharing. And if you haven't already, join, join our growing community over at sarahbox.com. Um, and we appreciate walking alongside each and every one of you as you bust through your own limiting labels or beliefs so that you can shine brightly into this world. You've been listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author, change agent, and strategic vision coach, Sarah Box. You can grab the show notes and find out how to work with Sarah at sarahbox.com forward slash no labels, no limits podcast. We'd love this podcast to reach as many people as possible. So please remember to rate, leave a five-star review and share the podcast with someone you think would get value from this conversation. Until next time, keep taking those daily action steps to align your purpose to your principles and achieve your goals in business and life.